Hey guys, what is up? It is me, Pagey, here once again with another video on Arrow Season 6, and this is going to be my review for Episode 6, otherwise entitled Promises Kept, otherwise known as the second part of the two-part Deathstroke story arc for this season. So obviously, before we get into the rest of the video, there will be spoilers, so if you've not watched the episode, go do that, then come back to this video later on. So yeah, seeing that this is the second part of the Deathstroke story arc, obviously last episode we had the first part, which really had flashbacks to Slade with a much younger Joe Wilson, but then also introduced, uh, uh, we'll introduce the, the story about Deathstroke or Slade going to find his son, and then towards the end we find out, well, his son is doing a bit more than he thought he was, and he's actually not you know, being held hostage by a mercenary group, he is leading that mercenary group, the Jackals. So Slade is a bit shocked come the uh, end of that episode five or the first part of this uh, story arc. But that is essentially where we kick off this episode. And it was actually sort of nice to see Slade and Joe interacting in like a normal manner in this present day before uh, everything goes uh, much, much worse towards the end of the episode. But just seeing that even though Joe sort of resented his father, he also did keep him in mind and also take some of his traits aboard that he learned from his father earlier on in his life. So that was actually pretty interesting to see that Joe was essentially becoming his father. But speaking of the past, we do get Slade flashbacks and we're, they're in uh, the period following Slade uh, leaving Lian Yu. So obviously in, at the end of the season two flashbacks, Oliver stabs uh, Slade in the eye. That's essentially where we pick up from. So he's rescued off the coast of the Philippines, I think they said. I think that's what they said. And he's recovering and he's, you know, getting back to his normal life. Now, something that was introduced towards the end of episode four, I think it was, was the idea of Diggle taking drugs or like an experimental steroid to help his tremors in his arms that he was having. And that continues this episode, and it does seem that Diggle's having even worse episodes because, you know, he's probably not getting the, the drugs in there that he should be getting. Like, he's definitely rationing them off. Um, I guess it's for himself, so maybe he doesn't get addicted, but he is rationing them off and just taking his time with them, if, if that makes sense. But in this episode, we do get Lila back. A lot of people were actually asking me, I think last episode, my last review, going, where's Lila? She hasn't been you know, very uh, frequent this season. If Well, I don't think she's been in the season at all. This is the first time she's been in this season. But this episode, it was like necessary that she was in there because, you know, Diggle was struggling. So it made sense that she was in this episode. I'm not a fan of them just chucking characters in for the sake of it. So I'd rather them save Lila for an episode where, you know, she's needed and she'll actually have some input into the episode. So I think it was right to save her until this episode. We might see more of her in the episodes to come if Digg with this like Diggle storyline continuing. But it was awesome to see Slade training in the ASIS, and he was training Joe like he did with Oliver on the island. I do like the, the contrasting and the similarities they had between the two characters of Joe and Oliver, how Slade was training them in the, in the exact same way. But it was sort of this, you know, similarities that was giving Slade these sort of memories, which at this point in time, he hates Oliver Queen. He wants to kill him. He wants to get revenge on him. So it's not really good that he's having these memories of Oliver Queens because it's sort of driving him mad. But it's due to this like sort of uh, memories that are coming back that we get Shadow back. Now in a trailer from a while ago, I think it was a sizzle reel trailer for um, Arrow Season 6, we did see a quick shot of Shadow in that trailer. So if you were keeping your eyes out, you would have known that she would have been appearing um, in this episode or in one of these episodes in the Deathstroke two-part arc. But obviously, we have seen Shadow pop up in, like, uh, like visions before with not only Slade, but Oliver as well. Like, Oliver's had visions of, like, Yao Fei and uh, Shadow as well. So, it's always good to have Shadow back. And this will be most likely, most likely the last time we see her, uh, you would have to think. So, that's you'd have to think this is maybe, like, the, the write-off point for Shadow unless they figure out a, a way to bring her back in. Obviously, she still has that twin sister, who I'm 99.9% .9 sure is still alive. But I thought that was a weird story arc in season three, so I don't know if they'd come back to that. So maybe just keeping this as like the last appearance of Shadow would be the right way to go. But we do meet Ricardo Diaz in this episode, as we all knew. He, I think he was in the trailer for a bit and he was also in the promo pictures and stuff. And he's actually, as I did predict like a while ago uh, in episode four, I think it was, I predicted that he would be behind the drug thing with Diggle because in the comics, uh, Diggle disguised as Green Arrow does have like a good interaction with Richard Dragon from the comics. So... I had a feeling this is what they were going for, and that's exactly what happened. Ricardo Diaz has the straight name of the dragon, so they're not going to call him Richard Dragon, most likely, because his name is Ricardo. So um, they'll probably just call him the dragon. That's like the code name they're going to go for. But Kirk Acevedo is playing him, and I think he did a pretty good job this episode. Do you like the, the voice he's using? I don't know if that's his normal voice or not. 
Um, I think he might be putting it a bit on, but we haven't actually seen his full potential because Ricardo Diaz is actually like a martial arts expert. So he might be keeping that under wraps. And then in the, you know, in the back half of this season, we might see him uh, definitely knock some scent in, into some people. So I'm looking forward to that. But this really puts Diggle uh, in between a rock and a hard place. Like he needs to like take down Ricardo Diaz because Team Arrow has the sniff on him. But then also he's like, well, crap, that's the dude who's making these drugs and I need those drugs to stop my tremor. So Diggle, as I said, stuck between a rock and a hard place. And this must have just been like tearing his mind apart. Now, one issue I did have in this episode was when Slade was in the ASIS and like he's talking to Shadow, like the visions, they have the uh, the Star City News or the Starling City News at that time on Australian TV. I just like was like, uh, you couldn't have made it like an Australian sort of news reporter and because like Oliver Queens was like a big name and his disappearance would have made like possibly international news that's why they would have been reporting it so I thought that was a bit weird that they had like the star city news dude as um like the reporter and that's that was appearing on Australian TV I just found that a bit weird I don't know if anyone else did but yeah but this is essentially where we see that mirror kuru kick in in the ASIS and the flashbacks and we just get savage death stroke he just chops people up, blood all over his face. That was insane. I wish we saw some of it, but obviously because the blood was all over him, it would have been extremely graphic and stuff. But um, that was pretty awesome. I could just imagine Slade doing that to all those people. So just savage, as I said. Now the Slade versus Joe fight towards the end of the episode was pretty decent. I didn't mind it. It was um, fairly short, but I wasn't expecting it to be too long, but it did really show the similarity, similarity sorry, between the two characters. But it's actually in this fight that we find out that Slade has another son called Grant Wilson. And Grant Wilson was like the death stroke we saw in Legends of Tomorrow Season 1 in that 2046 Star City episode. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, did Joe say he slit his throat? He slit his brother's throat? Because they sort of skipped over that and they just went away. And I was like, wait, hold on. Did he kill his brother or did he kill someone else? So I'm pretty sure he said he, he slit Grant Wilson's throat. But then later in the episode, Deathstroke says he's going to look for both of his sons. So is he looking for his other son's grave? If that's... I don't know. Let me know in the comments section down below because it skipped over really quickly. And I was like, okay, hold on. Rewind a bit. What just happened there? Because it just seemed to skim over, as I said, really, really quickly. But it is important to remember that Joe didn't die. Slay didn't kill Joe. So Joe was still out there and he could possibly be aiming to get revenge on Oliver Queen, possibly due to maybe some jealousy that he has between Oliver and his son's relationship. So maybe just keep that in your head. Joe could be coming back, you know, maybe later this season or next season. Just Joe is an open book at the moment. He's not dead. He's still out there. So watch your back for Joe Wilson. Now, was I the only one that noticed that Felicity and William were playing Injustice 2? I think that was Blue Beetle versus Sub-Zero. I think that's what they were playing. I think those are the two characters they were using. So, uh, yeah, that's a bit meta. Just a bit confusing to some people, maybe. But, you know, promote where you can. You know, some inner promotion there. So, I don't mind it too much. But I guess one of the, you know, the bigger parts of the episode that's going to continue on for the rest of the season, or at least for the next couple of episodes, was Diggle telling everyone about his tremors and the drugs he was taking and the issues he faced when taking down Ricardo Diaz because he was behind the drugs. So now Team Arrow knows about that, except Felicity and Oliver. So Felicity didn't, Felicity didn't go to that meeting because she wanted to spend time with Oliver and William. So it was just um, Dinah, uh, what's his name, Renee and Curtis, of course. So they're the only ones that know. So it does make you think, will Felicity and Oliver be made aware of these issues and that, will they be kept in the dark? So that's something that's to keep in mind that could cause some tension maybe next episode or in episodes to come later on in the season, depending on how bad Diggle's stuff gets. But Curtis does say he's going to work on like something for his arms, probably not similar to like Felicity's back. But, you know, if Curtis can make that, surely he could do something to help with Diggle's nerves and his arms to help the tremors just calm down a bit. But overall, I thought this is a pretty decent episode. I really did enjoy the flashbacks in regards to Deathstroke and just the Deathstroke stuff. In general, obviously, the door is open for Joe to come back, so they didn't really close that door, as I said. The stuff back in Star City was okay. It was a good introduction to Richard Dragon, but it was just really, as I said, an introduction to Richard Dragon. Just introducing the character, sort of giving him a connection to Tamara, but I think... Um, Kirk Acevedo, who's playing Ricardo Diaz, is doing a really, really good job uh, from what we've seen so far, and I'm excited to see more of him. And I think it was good that just they just gave us a bit of a taste of him and not reveal like what he's really aiming to do and all of that. And I think they're going to give us more backstories of him in the episodes to come, probably in the back half, because next episode is meant to be a Black Siren episode. And I think even the mid-season finale, episode 9, is meant to be a Black Siren episode as well. So we most likely won't see 
too much Richard Dragon at least until the back half of the season when that starts off in I think mid-January or something. But thanks for watching guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, it would be awesome if you could drop a like on the video to show your support. Let me know in the comments section down below what was your favorite part of the episode, what didn't you like, just give me all your opinions on uh, the different things in this episode. Like, did Joe say he killed Grant Wilson? Because I'm pretty sure he did, which then confused me about Slade saying he's going to find both of his sons. So, I don't know, let me know in the comments. And of course, if you are new to the channel, make sure to subscribe. I'll catch you later, guys. Goodbye.